Okay, so today we're going to take a look at uh, UDP program just to simply uh, send some information from one system to another. Now, I have two programs here uh, because network communication is going to work on a uh, client server basis. And so we're going to import a couple of uh, libraries here or modules. One of them is going to be socket and the other one's going to be sys. Now sys is going to be used for command line arguments. Notice here the usage um, is I'm going to actually t type in Python 3 and then the, the name of the program and then my first argument is going to be the computer that I am connecting to here. So this possibly could be an IP address or a host name. Uh, and in this case, I'm using localhost, which means that I am actually connecting to the same computer that I'm on. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want to be able to, dis to demonstrate a program to you. And so in this case, on my left-hand side here is the uh, receive program, or what's called the server side. Okay, And so maybe we should denote that here. I could say uh, server uh, receives and this side is the the other side is the client and um, and I've already got client send there. Now they're both going to import socket and sys. Okay so um, we've gone to the internet here and we've gone to the uh, python.org documentation and we're looking at the socket library and here is socket.socket .socket, which uh, allows us to create a socket in our program and the uh, default family is address family uh, inet which stands for um, internet and this is well this is IPv4 and this is IPv6 Unix is not for network programming it's more for um, I guess you could use it for inter-process communication or other things which I haven't done and um, the other ones I haven't used either but the type default is SockStream, which is TCP. Now what's TCP? Well, TCP is actually a protocol that allows you to communicate over a network and it has built-in error correction. And it's by far the most common. Um, and so if there's an error, then TCP protocol itself will correct it. The programmer doesn't have to worry about correcting stuff. On the other hand, SockDgram is for UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. And what that does is it's different from TCP in that, in that it has no error correction whatsoever. Now, so why would you use it? Well, it is very low latency because there's no error correction. However, it's kind of called fire and forget because once you send data in UDP, you, you're not sure if it got to where it's going. So it might not get there. And if it doesn't, you'll never know. So this is used for things like audio or video, where if you lose a few packets, it's OK. Um, but it's not used for sending something that is it has to be absolutely correct. Um, you know, like let's say a zip file or most things, like I said, you would use TCP. Uh, so if we go back to our code now, let's close this. And um, so you see the first part here is we create a uh, socket and we're going to specify uh, a datagram. So this is UDP here. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the first argument to this host variable 
And the second argument, we're going to change from a string into an integer. And we're going to set it as the port. Now, since we're not running this with administrator privileges, or in Linux it's called root privileges, we are, um, we cannot use, in Linux that is, I'm not sure about Windows, we can't use ports uh, like 1, 2, 10, 24. Those are reserved uh, for root. And so therefore, since we're just a user on the system, we would have to choose a port from uh, 1025 to a maximum of 65,000 something. Now, the, um, the bind here will then cause the program to connect to that computer and port. Now, the computer in this case, now, when I say computer, what I'm really talking about is the network card. Okay? But in this case, localhost is um, a network interface that is able to communicate internally with the computer and not with the external uh, network. So in other words, if you're going to use localhost, that means that, now by the way, localhost is a, is a name. It does have an address, and the address is 127001. That is the that is the translation of localhost. So if you want, it's like imagine if you want to send yourself something. What what IP address would you send it to? Well, one two seven zero zero one is the dotted quad. Or you could just type in localhost and it gets translated to that IP address. However, what if you for the host, what if you type in 0000? Well, then what you're doing is you're saying you're, you're going to bind now to the real network card. And so let's say, for example, if you're at home and you want to play, uh, you want to do some networking with two actual physical computers, then you would use that instead. Okay? With localhost, you're only going to be able to communicate with, your, with the computer you're sitting at. Now, that's what I'm doing here, because both of these programs on the left and the right are actually running on the same computer. And that's the reason why I can demonstrate it in a, in a video. But just know that, let's say, for example, if you're in a classroom and you want to communicate with your friend who's sitting at a different computer, then you would use 0000. Uh, and then it would connect to uh, your network card. And so you'd be able to connect to other computers. Okay? Now, um, here we go into a while true loop. And now we're at this line, s dot receive from. This line is blocking. What does blocking mean? Well, the only thing so far that we've done that you would recognize as being blocking is getting input from the user. So if we come over here and take a look at line 9, line 9 on the, on the send side, that's blocking. What does that mean? It means when line 9 executes, program execution stops, this message, type message, appears on the screen, and the computer waits. What does it wait for? Well, it waits for the user to type something and hit enter. So in other words, that means that the program is paused. That's why we call it blocking. So um, on line 15 over here, this is also blocking. So this pauses execution. So even though we're in a while true loop, this thing is not going to spin forever. Okay. What's going to happen is as soon as it gets to line 15, execution pauses. And what does it do? Well, it waits for inf data to be received on this socket. Now notice this socket is bound to host and port. Now we haven't specified the port yet, but let's actually try and run it. So here we go. So uh, if I type Python, or I can just type in P, so uh, that's good. So I'll type in Python 3 and then uh, UDP 
receive. And now I have to type in localhost. And now I'm going to pick port, um, let's say, 4444. OK, perfect. Now it says print before. And now I'm on line 15, and line 15 is blocking. So what it's doing is port 4444 is waiting for information. And so until it, until it receives information, the program is now stuck on line 15. So now I'm going to come over here to the client side. And now I'm going to run this. And I'll say uh, Python, and I'll go UDP send. And I, again, I'm going to type in uh, localhost, because that's the computer I'm connecting to. Now remember, these can be different IP addresses. So imagine if this was a different computer on the receive side, these two people would have to actually communicate with each other and say, hey, what's your IP address? So specifically, the person sitting at the client computer would actually have to physically talk or somehow communicate to the person sitting at the server side, the receive side, and ask the server side, hey, what's your IP address? And then, he would, and then this person would have to type that in here instead of localhost. OK? Now the port, this person has to also communicate and say, yeah, I'm listening on port 4444. So this guy says, OK, I'll send to that port. And so now, this, now if you notice, this program is blocking here. And it's blocking on the input line. So now he could say hello and hit Enter. And now, as soon as he hits Enter, this, this line 15 receives data. And so it stops blocking. And the execution continues. And so line 16 now prints after. OK, so you notice now that uh, the client program is actually finished. And so it's, it's, it's over. But the, but the server side has printed out some information, but it isn't, isn't done yet. Notice here that, so what is this decode stuff? Well, in Python 3, uh, because of the way that strings are handled, in Python 3, strings are UTF-8 by default. So notice here, when we typed in a message, the first thing that happened is that we, we encoded that into UTF-8. And then, because we went line.encode, and then we sent that line, OK? Because send to is going to expect a byte object. And so that's, that's what the encode does. In Python 2, we actually didn't need to do this. But you know what? Python 2 is it's dead. It's gone. So this is what the world is now. And so I don't think it's even worth mentioning what it was like before. There's no point. Uh, however, uh, notice that send to takes the data that we're sending, the line, which is whatever we typed in. In this case, it was hello. It could have been something more, by the way. And I, I'm going to talk about you know, how long can that be? Can I just you know, send an entire book? In, in, this, in this send to. So we'll, we'll get back to that. But notice, more importantly, that the second argument here for send to, and let's, let's actually um, go and look at send to. So now that lo at the, when um, the client program ends, the data, which is a byte object because it's been encoded with UTF-8, is sent to this address. And that address is a tuple that is described by the host and the port. Okay. Now, the remember here that the host is a string and the port is an integer. And that corresponds to lines 6 and 7. Okay. Um, So, you know, just as a side note, if we were to send to a 
a computer, for example, then perhaps uh, we could have the host, let's say, something like this, and then the port being something like that. And so that would be, now in this case, we're going to use localhost, but now you understand, like if you get the IP address of the computer you want to communicate with and it's not your own computer, then you'd have to type in something like that. Okay? And obviously, if it's going to be a computer not in your own home, but actually like your friend who lives somewhere else, now you have that whole other difficulty of having your friend who's on the server side punching a hole in their firewall and also uh, doing port forwarding. Okay? So now let's go to the back to the server side here and notice we get the data, we check to see if it's Q. First off, obviously we decode the data and then we print wh what it is. So we said hello is from and then we print out the address. Notice the address also is a tuple and the address is, so in other words, this part, so this is kind of, this might be a little confusing here, so this is worth paying attention to. We received a tuple from receive from, and in that tuple, the data is a byte object that we can decode. But the address is yet another tuple, okay? Because if you notice here, we, when we printed it out, we said print the data, okay, that's the hello, and then is from address. And the address now is itself a tuple, okay? So address itself is a tuple, and that is now where the, the IP address of where the, the information came from, and then the port. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Where did 54,351 come from? So let me explain that to you. So in order to explain this, I need to actually draw a picture. So here is the server side, okay? And this is the com server computer, and this is the client side, and this is the client computer. So the first thing that has to happen here, by the way, is the server side has to run first, okay? This is first, and this is second. In other words, the client cannot connect to the server if the servant if the server is not already running. Now, the server has a Python program, okay, that is that Python program is connected to port four 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 four. Well, you don't want to say connected to, it's like kind of listening on, so to speak. But it's waiting, remember what, what line are we at here, right? Uh, gosh, I don't know which one this is now, so maybe we kind of minimize this first, and then uh, that might make more sense. So yeah, so right now we're on line 15, and we're, it's blocking, but then this guy connects. Now the question now is, notice this guy when he connects, he actually connects to 4444, but notice in the, in the when I'm going to draw this, this Python program connects out to that location. But when we specified it, we specified the destination port to connect to. We never specified the port from which it is going to exit the client computer or you know be sent from we never we never and that port by the way was 54000 i forgot the number now uh 54351 so this is called an ephemeral uh, 
Uh, I think this is the way you spell it. That's called an ephemeral port. And what that is essentially is that port is actually chosen by the operating system. The programmer didn't pick that port. And it's really not important in any case because the information is simply leaving this computer from that port. And uh, by the way, I mean, this is all happening on the same computer, okay? Because I'm using localhost. But nonetheless, I'm describing a situation where it, was, it would be different computers, but it would be the same. But remember, this program, the server one, is the one that's printing out the information. So it says here, hello is from 127.0.0.1 and from that specific port. Not the port it received it on, but the port that it was sent from. Okay? But this program is not finished yet. It's still in, the, in this while true loop. So we can run this again and send another message, uh, something like that. And now comes the question is how much information can we send? Well, notice here, um, this 1024, which I haven't discussed yet, right here, um, on uh, line number 15 on the server side is the number of bytes, so one kilobyte is read on this line. Now I can change this. So let's try it. Let's stop this program. And you know, I could stop it uh, a number of ways here. For example, I could just hit control C and do a keyboard interrupt and stop it. But let's, let's, um, let's change this code and let's change the receive from uh, amount of bytes to receive, let's say just to four, okay? And now let's save it and now let's run it again, okay? Same port as before and now let's connect to it and let's send it a message. Let's say, um, Something like, uh, how about, um, panorama, okay? I Just to top the word off the top of my head. And I just wanted to pick a word that was longer than four letters. And now if I hit enter, notice what it says here. It says, pano is from. Again, this is an ephemeral port, and we didn't choose that. But it didn't get the entire message, OK? So that's a problem there. Um, what if we try sending something else? What if we say, hello? Now it says, hell. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't a good word to choose. But in any case, um, it, it, what's happening here, right, is that it's only ever going to take four letters at a time. Okay? Now, let's actually try this such that we actually cause this thing to end. So let's send the letter Q, which is, which will cause this program to break. So now when I sent the letter Q, it didn't print it. It breaks the while true loop. And the, and the server side ends. OK, so what I'd like you to try and do now is copy these two programs. You, do, you don't necessarily need the comments. And test it out. Test it on both the, test it from both the uh, client and server uh, side. Uh, not only try to do this on your own computer using localhost, but also perhaps try and have another computer uh, in your home and then you can actually c connect uh, to the actual IP of the other computer and um, if you're not sure how to get the to discover the IP of the other computer you can actually type in 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 uh, I think it was in Windows 
it was uh, if config. Okay. Or uh, so sorry, that's that's in Linux. In in Win in Windows, it's ip config. So open up a little DOS box and type ip config, and then you'll discover your IP address. Okay. And um, you don't need FLTK to to test this. You just Python. Good luck.